Good evening. The government has announced an extra £3.5 billion to pay for the removal of flammable cladding from high-rise flats in England. More than three and a half years after the Grenfell Tower fire, there are still at least 700,000 people living in blocks with dangerous cladding. Ministers have been under considerable pressure to do more to help. Flat owners say while the extra money is welcome, it doesn't address any of the other fire safety issues they're having to pay millions of pounds for. Our business correspondent Sarah Corker has this report. I'm bankrupt. A lot of other people are on the way to going bankrupt. Caught up in Britain's growing cladding crisis, thousands of people are trapped living in unsafe flats. It's not our fault. We're not to blame for this. They're now facing life-changing bills. People across the country are crying out for help. In Manchester, Ben's building has multiple fire safety faults. His repair bill alone runs into tens of thousands of pounds. We don't know where we're going to get that money from. We as leaseholders feel like we're just at the short end of this horrible, horrible mess where we're just not being protected by the government like they promised us that they would. Today, the government announced an additional £3.5 billion for the Building Safety Fund to remove cladding for tower blocks over 18 metres. For buildings under that height, there will be a new loan scheme with repayments capped at £50 a month per leaseholder. And to force the industry to contribute, there will be a levy or tax on developers which build future high-rises. This exceptional intervention amounts to the largest ever government investment in building safety. We believe in home ownership, and today we firmly support the hundreds of thousands of homeowners who need our help now. And so I think this is the right judgment. But campaigners have reacted angrily. They say loans for smaller blocks are not the answer. We've had people in tears, you know, people just distraught and they don't know how they're going to see an end to this. The amount of money that they've released is not enough and once again it doesn't cover all of the issues. Since the Grenfell Tower fire, safety inspections on other high-rise buildings have exposed not just flammable cladding but other fire safety problems too, including defective insulation and missing fire breaks. But there is still no government money to fix these faults and it's flat owners who are still facing big bills. Labour called the proposals an injustice. Homeowners shouldn't face bankruptcy to fix a problem they didn't cause. Unfortunately, these proposals will still leave too many people struggling and facing loans instead of being given justice. And the Conservative MP for Stevenage said he watched the announcement with his head in his hands. We don't believe that these soldiers should have to pay. And the very idea of loans and the way in which they were announced, it's just it's a punch to the guts to millions of these soldiers up and down the country. After years of pressure on the government to do more to help flat owners, this has been broadly welcomed by concerned Tory backbenchers. But those stuck in flammable flats say it's still taking too long to get a grip on this crisis. Sarah Corker, BBC News in Manchester. Let's talk to our deputy political editor, Vicky Young, at Westminster. So why all this extra money now? Well, lots of Conservatives I spoke to today say that these are leaseholders. We are the party that has championed home ownership. These are the kind of people we should be helping. They are in this predicament through the, no fault of their own. The big question, though, is who pays for this? It was very striking listening to the government today, trying to come up with a balance. Yes, there will be uh, a levy on the industry. Leaseholders will have to come up with money in some circumstances. They don't want the entire bill to fall on the taxpayer, many of whom, of course, couldn't afford uh, to buy houses themselves. There's also a question, I think, of how long this has all taken. A pattern has emerged throughout this, uh, and that is that the government starts to try and address one issue. They try to look at public housing, then it moves to private housing, one type of cladding, then another. Fire safety aspects, which aren't even covered by this today, which do need to be sorted. I think the scale of this really has gone beyond anything any minister would have thought when they first started really trying to right the wrong of Grenfell. So I think, yes, a significant intervention by the government today, but the campaigning certainly will not stop here. Vicky Young, thank you. Meanwhile, the Grenfell inquiry heard today that the company that sold the cladding used on the tower knew four years before the fire 
that it was flammable. But the firm, Arconic, didn't withdraw the product from sale. Well, our Home Affairs correspondent, Tom Simons, has been listening to today's evidence. And just tell us a bit more about what was said. Well, Arconic made the flat panels that cladding is formed from and then put on the sides of buildings like Grenfell Tower and also like the buildings that uh, Vicky's been talking about caught up in this building safety crisis. It has always maintained that it just made the raw materials. It wasn't responsible for how they were used. But I think we heard three important pieces of evidence today. The first was that Arconic tested its product in 2011 and it was found wanting. And they didn't, uh, well, they decided not to tell customers unless customers asked about fire safety. Piece of evidence number two was that they knew about uh, these fires that happened in the United Arab Emirates in 2013, knew that that raised questions about the cladding, but they didn't take their product off the market, unlike some of their competitors. And then finally, I think they were keen to win that contract for the Grenfell Tower project to get their product on the sides of a building, even though they knew that the cladding was flammable, that the building was a high-rise, and that people lived there. Tom Simons, thank you.